Everyone. Today it's all about these guys, rabbits and rodents, for the Certificate of Basic Animal Care Science. And I'm here today with Sue. How are you, Sue? Good. I'm a bit awkward with this old rabbit <laughs> business. He keeps scaling up me. He is. Keep hitting him and he'll be fine. <laughs> I'll try. Can you tell me a bit of a background on rabbits and rodents? Well, rabbits and rodents are being kept as pets now. And basically, um, the group that falls into that is uh, one of the characteristics is they've got teeth that keep growing. So they're gnawing animals, in other words they need to be able to gnaw at things. As you can see these rabbits gnawing away at the cabbage here to keep their sheep, um, their teeth um, in shape and um, sharp. If they don't, they overgrow and they can't eat. Oh, so in the rodent um, family we get things like the chinchillas, rats and mice, which later in the show you'll learn all about. <laughs> so where do they all originate from? Well, um, if we uh, look at uh, rabbits, rabbits initially come from um, Spain, basically. And um, years ago, they, um, the Phoenicians you basically were the only country that had rabbits. And then when they started going on their voyages, they'd take rabbits with them because it was easy meat. Oh. Good meat on the voyage. And that's how they started getting introduced to all other countries. Oh, right. So how far back would that have been? Rabbits have been around since the Ice Age, basically. Gee. And the early domestication was about 1000 BC with the Phoenicians. And then the earliest breeding of rabbits um, apparently is in France, in the Champagne area, where the French Catholic monks started breeding the rabbits for their colour and their size for meat. And um, so, yeah, that was the earliest domestication. And now, of course, we have rabbits as pets as well as shows and competitions. Gee. Can yeah. I ask, what's the difference between a rabbit and a hare? Well, a rabbit is based, there, there's a few things. Rabbits have what we call altricial young, which means that they're born hairless and they can't mm. see. And the other thing is that rabbits live in warrens under the ground. Now, the European rabbit, there was a place in England which had a, this huge warren. 450 rabbits apparently lived in there and it had 2,000 entrance ways. <laughs> That's wow. huge, you can just imagine that. <laughs> it's like all your underground city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, the, and the hares on the other hand have, um, their young are born with hair and they can see. Um, they also have longer ears than rabbits and they um, live on nests on top of the ground, not under the ground. Mm. So, oh, the other thing is their markings, they've got black on their coat as well. Black Very markings. Interesting. Yeah. And you hear um, the saying, breed like rabbits. Do rabbits breed a lot? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's why we, we always say um, new to the males, if you've got a pair, always new to one. Um, they basically breed when the female's about three to six months of age, they can start having um, litters. Okay. And it uh, takes them 31 days and they can pop out four to six little bunnies. Uh -uh. And then um, they can actually get pregnant at the same time same time as they give birth, the same day. So every 31 days you can count on a litter. Gee. So yeah, they do breed like rabbits. Wow, <laughs> so interesting. And yeah. is there many differences these days from wild rabbits and domesticated pet rabbits? Well, domesticated pet rabbits we keep in hutches and you'll notice that they've got little um, boxes to go into which mimic the warrens. Um, but basically, yeah, that's the only difference and they're obviously not terrified of humans and predators, whereas the um, wild rabbits will obviously run around and the wild rabbits that we get um, in New Zealand are more hares, right. whereas in um, Britain and the UK you get the European rabbit which is still quite wild there. Oh, yeah. Very good. And I'm not sure if this is true or not, is, do rabbits eat their own faeces? Is that correct? Yes they do. But it's actually a, a very cunning um, nutrient saving device of the rabbits. What happens is at night, so we don't normally see this, sometimes people do see it and get distressed, but they, they pass the faeces which look like little clusters of grapes and it's got a bit of mucus on them. Mm. And they eat that and what happens is they basically get vitamins and um, other nutrients from that. So in other words, they re-digest that food and then during the day they pass out the, the bigger pill-like faeces which they don't eat. Oh, so it is wow. quite normal. Yeah. Gee, it's very interesting. I'm just looking, he's got lovely eyes. How well can they see? 
Rabbits can see quite well, they, um, for, for quite a distance, and um, they like cats, they can see better than us in dim light, oh, wow. so they've got good eyesight. And you'll notice that rabbits have different, various different colours of eyes, and even pink, and the white rabbits, you'll notice the eyes yeah, are quite same. pink, That's yeah. Right. They can also, um, they can't tell colour very well, but apparently they can tell the difference between blue and green, so it's very little bit of colour that they can see but they basically recognize you by your shape, voice and smell. Oh. So when you come to your rabbit, always talk to them. <laughs> if you're wearing a big heavy coat and they don't recognize the shape, <laughs> otherwise they'll get a fright. <laughs> oh. And his wee nose is twitching away. What's his sense of smell like? Very good, nearly as good as a dog. And when they twitch like that, what they're doing is they're basically exposing the, um, the, the smell um, cells so that they can actually smell better. Oh. You'll notice when a rabbit is uh, relaxed, his nose will stop twitching, but when he's really um, nervous or just want to see what's going on, his nose will twitch apparently up to 120 times a minute, so that's <laughs> really fast, a lot of twitching. <laughs> Isn't it? The sweet one's making all sorts of quivering. I think maybe she's cold. <laughs> yeah, well she's just, yeah, she might be a wee bit cold or a wee bit scared, having all these <laughs> people yes. looking at her. And what about predators? Who are their main predators? Main predators are um, in New Zealand are basically for the young as probably the stoats and hunters, obviously. But in other countries, you get the likes of foxes and those kind of predators, which will get them. And also, probably um, uh, eagles and hawks on the young as well. They can also prey oh. on rabbits. And what about the ears? How well, well can they hear? They can hear quite well actually and um, they, they can pick up sound from all directions and you can see they move their ears all around. The other thing that ears are used for, which not many people know, is for keeping cool. Oh really? Yeah. So what happens is when they get um, hot, the blood comes up into the ear and then the wind and the um, air temperature cools it down and it circulates again to keep the body cool. So. Pretty clever, isn't it? Yeah. Well, thank you, Sue. You seem to know so much about these rabbits. <laughs> Starting to get a dead arm, I think we should put you them back. put them back, I think so. <laughs> Let them have their breakfast with the rest. That's right. Go find their cages. Caroline here at East Row Pets is the woman to talk to about rodents. How are you, Caroline? Good. I see we have some rats and rodents here with us. We have indeed, yes, indeed. What we're going to talk about today is some of our little friends. This one here is Fizz. Oh, not, look oh, at that tail. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Do you want to have a wee closer look? I don't know about don't that know. one. Perhaps I'll hold one of the little ones. That's one of Fizz's babies. We'll get one of those out for you shortly to have a closer look at. Fizz is one of our um, female rats. Rats are quite intelligent little creatures, really. They're always busy cleaning and poking around at things, and they love to sort of sit on your shoulder and play in your hair. And they're always um, busy sort of moving things in their cage, and that. they're quite clean as a pet on the are whole. They? Yeah, because they don't toilet it in their bed, or if anything has sort of made a mess, they'll cart it out and cart it away. They sort of toilet one area of their house, so they don't just tour it wherever. Um, so yeah, they're quite fun, interactive wee pets because you can handle them. They've got their own wee personalities and stuff. And we tend to freak out about rats because we think, mm. ugh, vermin sort of things. But I mean, you can see she's quite inquisitive and very friendly and stuff. And um, nothing like the wild sort of rats. Yes. Yeah, so um, the important thing with having a pet rat is giving them a proper um, size enclosure. Ideally, probably with wire because they like to climb and it makes the cage sort of bigger because they're not just living on the floor surface of their cage. And they need to have drinking vessels rather than open bowls or dishes or containers so they don't toilet in them and it's cleaner. Right. Um, and then a good grain based, get a baby, a wee <laughs> grain based. Um, diet which has got vitamins and minerals and stuff in it. A lot of people tend to want to give mice and rats um, things like sort of bread which is very high in yeast which can bloat the wee belly, um, cheese which they'll eat but whoo, they get pretty smelly afterwards oh, and very right. high in cholesterol. It's not an actual part of a rodent's diet to sort of have to produce or digest that type of sort of um, food so it's not really an advisable thing to feed. So predominantly grain based diet with fruit and veggies like sort of apples and corn and carrot and broccoli and yeah. those 
to chop that things. up pretty small for Oh, them. about a, sort of the old five cent sort of piece size for a rat because they pick it up and they nibble right. with their wee hands and stuff. Yeah, and we give them wee nibble blocks as well to chew and gnaw away on because their teeth are constantly oh growing and they need something to gnaw away on. Otherwise, they can have um, gum infections or health problems if they don't have hardcore or hard nibbly things to chew on. Oh, yeah. Interesting. It's amazing mm. how much... Equipment there is for rats and rabbits and things. Oh nice. yeah, it's not like years ago where you just chuck them in a cage and give them the basics. There's lots of bright, colourful, funky, Some stimulating really houses cool and beds and different things for them to play in. I really like the look um, of this. In. Yeah, it's, it's pretty little, cool, isn't it? Is this yeah. for a rat? It's for a mouse. Rats get quite sort of good size. There's not as much variety in the way of um, accessories for rats as there is for mice. And you can see her there sort of with her wee fingers sort of nibbling away at her food. Yeah. Do they live quite well all together in such a small confined area? Oh, well, this is just one of the carry cages, and this is mum with a few of her babies, and the babies are about five weeks of age, so they're just about old enough to leave and be fully weaned, independent to go and find their own homes without their mum. So when are they um, fully weaned? We wean weeks? about sort of five and a half to six weeks is normally the weaning age before the males and females sort of can potentially start getting a bit stroppy with each other, um, and rodents start reproduction pretty young, so you'd like to get them away from each other so that they don't interbreed and so that they can mature properly um, and also you don't want them with the mum too long she needs to sort of have a bit of a break because she can have 15 or 16 babies all at once so wow. she's glad to see the back end of that <laughs> many teenagers yeah I bet yeah. what about this where you got a wee mouse down this here? is a wee mouse yeah and you can see there's a considerable sort of difference in size on your mice to your rats yeah, mice are quite cute, popular eh? pets for younger children because they're smaller and easier sort of to handle just watch you sort of well, it round your hand there. How do you get on with diseases and things with um rodents? Well, it's like any animal um, hygiene and animal husbandry. Good handling, good clean cage, um, good balanced diet, good clean diet, um, and not giving scraps and sort of like leftovers and not letting it sort of foul or spoil the cage. And generally right. there's not too much of a risk or an issue. And just washing your hands before and after handling, um, I mean, is going to eliminate you getting anything from them and things like that. Yeah. So how often do you need to be cleaning out the cages? It really depends on how large the cage is and how many animals you've got living in there. Um, I mean it's advisable to clean the average mouse or rat cage with one or two animals at least two to three times a week. Right. Um, and some people are more sensitive to the rodents sort of urine or smell so they may be cleaning it daily. That's fine as well. Yeah. Okay. How sensitive are they to noise? Um, well they are quite sensitive to noise and I mean so I mean loud music and lots of jumping around mm. and things like that is going to stress them out and small animals can get very easily sort of stressed so you want to have them in a normal sort of routine but not sort of be excessively handling them or having them around a lot of real sort of scary loud sort of noises they will tolerate the odd bit of noise but not you know excessive like like you and me I mean you don't mind music or you know yeah. things in, in moderation and quiet but not sort of full on where are you going so if you're going to have say a lot of people around or a party or something you'd be better to remove them from the room if they would else. normally live in the living room or the lounge or that with you yeah you'd be better to put them in a bedroom or a wash house in their cage so that they've got their secure house that they like and they've got food and water but they're away from the high activity high stress and real loud noise and also it stops anyone getting bitten putting their fingers in mm. tormenting the animals because it's a very easy thing to do because you go kitty 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 and of course the poor rat's only defense is to bite because it's stressed right. And then the poor rat or animal gets in trouble and it's not really their fault. They're just, you know, doing what comes natural. Can we get diseases when they bite us? Or well, do I mean, we need to have vaccines just, against there's not like that? really. I mean, if the environment's being kept clean and you wash the area oh, um, thoroughly them. afterwards, I mean, there's generally not too much of a, a risk there. Okay. Um, but I mean, if in doubt, um, I mean, you can just sort of check with your doctor. But a lot of it does come down to the human hygiene and the hygiene of the cage and keeping the cage clean, keeping the bedding sort of like they run on a sort of sawdust that absorbs their sort of urine toilet business. Have a nice sort of soft, fluffy sort of toilet sort of. Um, you know, nesting material that um, Fizz has got to wear babies in right. and just washing the wheel and washing accessories with an animal safe disinfectant is going to ensure that the cage is even more sterile and clean um, but I mean anything um, can carry parasites or diseases but it all comes down to how well we look after them as to the risk of cross contamination Right, I'm fascinated by the wee tails <laughs> right there. Um, 
yep. with these guys. Yep. Do they have any problems with them getting trapped in doors and bitten and things like that? Yes, they do. Yeah, children sometimes can be a bit hasty and sort of let them sort of jump. Yeah, yeah there's one of the tails there. They can be a bit hasty and slam a door a bit quick and a tail is an easy area to get injured or damaged. Um, but they can live quite happily with, you know, half or two thirds of a tail after an injury so long as the area has been kept clean after injury that it doesn't cause infection. So what yeah. is the main function of the tail? Um, balance, because they, they love to climb and romp around and balance on things. So it's a bit like a cat or a dog having a tail, it's more for balance more than anything. They don't use it like a monkey to actually grasp or hold on to anything. Um, it's more just sort of, I mean that's as, as good as it gets, wrapping around your sort of finger like that, just sort of like, hey, don't move, I'm happy. Um, but I mean, yeah, they don't swing off it or anything, it's just right. more a balancing thing. Yeah. So is this a, like a wee field mouse? No, this is a wee domestic mouse. Oh, right. A field mouse wouldn't be that pretty. It'd be all oh, really? freckly and feral coloured. Um, this is a wee um, domestic mouse. It's quite nice, yeah. isn't he? He is quite cute. He's yeah. so small. What's his chances in the world? He must um, have predators everywhere he goes. He has got predators, but he can get into areas that predators can't get into. He's very cunning. He knows where to hide. He knows where to sleep. He can cart food off like a wee squirrel and stash it in his wee sort of den or wee hiding place. Um, so they have got quite a sort of, and notice how clean they are, he's gone mm -hmm. from one person to another, so he's washing, it's like, oh, I'm somewhere new now. So they are very clean and very intelligent animals, despite the sort of reputation because of the feral um, field mice and rats. Yes. Yeah. I must admit, I wasn't that keen at the thought of having mice and rodents crawling all over me. How can you get people used to them? You know, um, a lot of people do have fears about rats They and do. Mice. My mother's a prize example. She'd hold that pet mouse and see a wild one run across the floor and you freak see, out. Yeah, and they squeal and yeah. people are crazy. Well, um, but, I mean, the thing is, it's just exposing them to domestic animals, showing them that they're friendly, they don't bite, they are clean, they don't smell. I mean, you're never going to educate everyone that they're not like the wild ones but I mean everyone's entitled to their likes or dislikes. That's true. Yeah. Ooh, okay should we put this wee one back? Yeah we'll put this wee mousey back down the bottom in his carry cage because we can't put them together because mice and rats don't particularly live that well in close confinement. One generally dominates and takes out the other one so mice and rats do need to be kept separately right. in separate enclosures because the rats generally will eat the mice or take over and dominate all the food and stuff so they do need to be kept separate. There you go, you can have that too. And how much of this equipment is necessary? Um, well I mean you can go with your basics or you can go as elaborate as you like like any animal but there are the essential basics like somewhere to house the animal, keep them warm, um, so feeding, um, and your nibble blocks and nutrition, um, lots of your sort of vitamins, nice warm cosy places to sleep, all those sorts of things are essential. But if you're interested in getting a pet mouse or rat, the best thing to do would be pop in and see myself or one of the staff and ask all the questions that you want to about how to handle them, how long do they live, mm. you know, what do they eat, all those kinds of things and we'll be able to assist you um, here at East Road Pets with all of that. That sounds good. I'm ready to step up into something bigger. Let's go have a look at the chinchillas and guinea pigs, was it? Yes, there's guinea pigs as well. I've never seen a chinchilla. Haven't you? Sounds interesting. Oh, you're in for some fun. Caroline, what are these wee guys? These wee guys are a wee South American desert rodent called chinchillas. They look a bit like a possum come rat come sort of whatever, but they're a wee South American desert creature. Beautiful big tails and beautiful soft fur and um, big Dumbo-like sort of ears and twitchy, twitchy whiskers. Would you like to hold one, Mel? I'll try. It's the twitchy whiskers that are we'll freaking me out. We'll give you this one here, okay. that one there. 
that's, oh, that's um, not so bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. They're very unusual looking, aren't they? They are, yeah. He's quite calm, that particular one. That is George, and this is Willie. They're both male tintillas. This one here is the common or the dominant colour, grey, and you've got a wee beige one. Willie is uh, 12 months of age, and this wee fella here is nearly 8 years of age. Oh, right. So, and in captivity, they usually sort of live about 8 to 10 years as a life sort of expectancy. So this one's just a youngster. Oh. Meanwhile, you've got a, a nearly retired little child chap over your <laughs> side. Unfortunately um, of the rodent family these are probably the most misunderstood. Um, rodents have the old saying of breed like flies or breed like rabbits. Chantillas aren't prolific breeders like a lot of their cousins, they breed quite slowly. He'll just snuggle into you, there you oh. go. Usually one to two sets of twins once, twice a year, um, and their pregnancy cycle's 111 days, so it's about Gee. three and a half months. Quite a lot longer than a rabbit yeah. or a mouse or a rat or a guinea pig or other rodent animals. Um, and they come out a bit like a sort of guinea pig where when they are born they dry off and then they're running around behind their mum. So they're quite adorable little babies to watch sort of grow. And the other thing that's unfortunate about them is people um, tend to think that they're like a rabbit and then just chuck in hay and cabbage and off they go. They scour very easily. They get the dysentery or upset tummy. Oh, so predominantly their diet is dry, um, a fortified food such as a good quality chinchilla mix. Um, they also, with that beautiful soft coat they've got, very they dust soft. bath. They don't actually bath in water and you don't bathe them. Because it's such a thick, heavy pelt, they can get a chill very easily. So they're an indoor pet, not an outdoor pet like a rabbit or a guinea pig. Right. And um, yeah, they like lots of hay and little bits of fresh fruit and vegetables, but in very small portions. They also love corn, broccoli and silver beet. Um, and another one, they really enjoy strawberries. Oh, really? Yeah, they sit there and eat all the wee pips out. They have lots of fun with those. No, about giving them yeah. strawberries. <laughs> well, you wouldn't share that much. <laughs> so how often do they need to be fed a day? Um, yeah, well, I mean, usually just sort of once a day is sufficient. Don't you eat the microphone, the man will get growly. Uh, once a day is sufficient, just topping their food bowl up, making sure they haven't toileted and that, keeping the area clean. But a lot of people will check them in the morning and check them at night in case they've stood in their bowl or anything like that, just as a precaution. Yeah, Great. Lots of clean, dry hay um, and you need to have a good quality hay for them because any hay that may have mould spores or anything like that is toxic to any animal but especially these wee guys because they've got a very sensitive wee stomach so sourcing a good quality nutritious hay um, as part of their um, dry diet is really important. Right. Yeah. So what makes a chinchilla a good pet? Um, well they're semi nocturnal so they're not wanting to play whilst you're at work, they're ready to play and be active and stuff when you're at home at night so oh, that's what's good. really good about them. They're quite um, beautiful wee creatures. They don't get big so you don't need a huge cage for them but the more space you can give them the better because they love to climb up trees and romp around and make lots of noise. They don't run in wheels like rabbit, uh, like your mice and rats or anything though because they do get those big bushy sort of funny tails at the, the back stuff. The tails stuck. are crazy, I was just it's, thinking that. It's, it's a like bit a like possum tail. a possum tail. I call it a bottle brush or a basil brush tail because that's what it reminds me of. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, they're great wee pets to have indoors and have lots of fun. They can run really fast around the house so it's important to close the doors and make sure you know where they are because right. they will um, find a little hiding spot underneath the sofa or underneath the fire or silly places like that and hide. So they can have lots of time and additional exercise out of the cage but always supervised. But they make great wee pets because they're, they're small, they're cuddly, they're fluffy, they're adorable in their own sort of little way and low maintenance. They are quite low maintenance. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's handy. Yeah. Do they live better together? Do they need to have a friend? Um, a lot of people, they, they are relatively social. If you're wanting to keep them, a lot of people will keep um, a male and a female so that you don't get sort of a dominant one. Um, but I mean, if the cage has got enough climbing things, good food, and things like that to keep them stimulated and activities to do, a lot of chinchillas are kept as singular pets. It's a personal choice thing. Right. Yeah. And how similar are they to other rodents like guinea pigs? Much similarities? Um, well, there are a few similarities, but as I say, oh, mainly oh, they're doing me. stuff. They bit you! It me! Oh dear, come it's here. That's crazy. Oh. <laughs> You didn't like Mel, that's oh, not very nice. Do they often bite? Not normally, no. You must have had something nice for morning tea or something that it liked. Oh, yeah, no, normally unless you squeeze them too tight or something, they don't normally bite, but maybe he sensed you a bit iffy about them, a bit like a dog and said, oh, I'll get this nice lady. Yeah. I don't think I want one as a pet. <laughs> tell me about guinea pigs and perhaps they're more to my liking. Yeah, guinea pigs, okay. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll put these wee babies away. Maybe they're getting they're a bit stressed and that's why it nipped you. So we'll put these wee babies away and we'll move around and see some of the guinea pigs and other creatures. So 
which little baby of the guinea pigs would you like to have a closer look at, Mel? One of these funny looking ones. One of these funny looking ones. One hair. of those, okay, it's a rosy Abyssinian, which is a special breed of guinea pig, which has got a bad hairdo every oh. day. You think you can manage this one? Yes, as long as it doesn't have teeth. Oh, if you Isn't look after him, you'll be right. Come here, sweetheart. Oh, Get one of his wee brothers or sisters out. He's making cutesy wee noises. Guinea pigs are quite um, good little animals like that because they oh. do communicate with each other and they squeak and sort of squawk and stuff. Rabbits and chinchillas and other animals don't really have a form of communication. But guinea right. pigs will communicate amongst themselves. So they're a little bit more social than other sort of small rodents. And they also squeak when they know it's feed time and sort of make you soften and give them a wee bit more to eat and things like that. Yeah, so they're quite cool. And as you can see, there's all sorts of different shapes, sizes. Lot, and colours. There? There's all different breeds of guinea pigs. Um, they're still essentially a guinea pig, but they've got different coats or different hair types, which makes them a different sort of almost subspecies sort of, of the guinea mohawk. pig family. Yeah, it's got a bit of a mohawk, bad hairdo day going on. <laughs> One of the unfortunate things with guinea pigs and rabbits as pets is people don't give them spacious enough cages or just chuck them on the lawn in a hutch. Um, and think that it's a sufficient enough diet. In the case of rabbits and guinea pigs, you can see here in the cage that we've got them um, in, a holding cage, they have their fresh fruit and vegetables, greenery and stuff to eat. They have pellets, which is essentially important for rabbits and for guinea pigs especially, because they're very prone to lacking in vitamin C and other minerals in their diet. Even with a variety of fresh fruit and vegetables, such as apples, broccoli, cabbage, carrots, apples, um, all those sorts of things, they still will lack in minerals or salt. So we need to provide right. them with a pellet, which is a source of iron, calcium, mineral and other things for them to grow and keep a beautiful, good, glossy coat. And in the case of a bad hairdo job like this, you may need to groom them. So it's going to assist you and make grooming a lot easier as well if they've got a good, balanced diet. Right. you also notice that they've got a funny contraption here for drinking out of. We never use drinking bowls or vessels for rabbits or guinea pigs. They're very prone to getting a chill or tossing in their water, which isn't very hygienic. Oh, okay. So a drinking vessel or drinking bottle is essential for a rabbit or guinea pig. And you can see they like to stand up on their back legs mm. and sort of investigate things. They don't sort of hop around like a rabbit, but they still like to exercise their back legs. So we give them um, hay usually in the basket, but it looks like they've already demolished that lot for the morning. <laughs> and um, so it makes them stand up and use their back legs. And there's also um, salt licks in as well. Right. The other thing that we give for you, we guinea pigs, um, to keep them in good health, um, like we probably mentioned earlier, they have got constantly growing little teeth and they like to gnaw and mm. everything. So hardcore vegetables like cabbage and carrots and those sorts of things will assist, but a good nutritious nibble block that's also got vitamins and minerals is going to be natural and hard and encourage them to wear their teeth down and also stop them from chewing their way out of the hutch. Okay, how long will one of those last in this cage? Oh, in this cage they get one or two every day because okay. this is a holding cage where we've got a few different animals for sale but in the average case of an average pet one they would have one to two of those nibble blocks per week it's a bit like giving candy to a kid where it's right. nice and sweet so some of them will chomp through it really quickly and others are a little bit more laid back and just take little nibbles as they need it <laughs> yeah. so i see you've got rabbits in here as well so they they're okay together? A lot of people do keep pet rabbits and guinea pigs together. You really need to base the decision on um, how big is your cage as a full term living environment and how big is the rabbit that you're going to be keeping because some species of rabbits get really quite massive and it's probably not practical to have a huge breed of rabbit or a large breed of rabbit with a little guinea pig because if the rabbit gets a bit toey he can kick with those really big back strong feet mm. and maybe inflict harm. Um, so a lot of people keep them separate and some people because they've got one animal and they want to give it a companion and it's too old um, to put with another guinea pig because they've left it too long and they've got a mature animal it's very hard to adapt a mature animal with a juvenile or young animal so in the case of those sorts of situations a rabbit and guinea pig are quite often put together as companions to live together because essentially their um, palate mix if you've got a good quality palate is the same for a rabbit or guinea pig and you also the fruit and veggies nibble blocks water mm. bottle hay and we use hay rather than straws because there's more nutritional value for eating and if you've got pregnant mums or mums that may be feeding there's more nutrition in hay than there are straws or pea straws. Right. Yeah. So could you say most rodents can live quite well together? Um, yes and no, because I mean I wouldn't be putting a rat and a rabbit together or no, those sorts of yeah. things. So some rodents are adaptable, even though they're of the same family, their nutritional things or housing and stuff may be different. So you need to ask questions where you're going to the breeder or reputable store to get them from. Yeah. You personally, if you're going to have a pet rodent, what yeah. would you say would be 
easiest one to have? Um, probably a rabbit or a chinchilla. Yeah, for mm. me it is anyway. Well, I'm definitely off chinchillas. <laughs> but thank you, it's been really interesting. Who would have thought there's so much to know about rodents? Indeed. You've been watching the Certificate of Basic Animal Care Science. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Um, I'm going to have to nurse my poor wee finger for a while. Join us next week. We're looking at ruminants. We'll see you then.